The Great White North fights back against COVID-19. Canadian universities are front and center tackling this crisis and tracing its impact on our lives. This is Universities Fight COVID-19 from Radio Western. Each episode we tell you about COVID-19 related research and commentary coming out of Canadian universities. Today's episode is from Memorial University of Newfoundland. Are strategies being used to combat COVID-19 in southern Canada going to work in the Canadian North? Maybe not. Overcrowding and inadequate housing means physical distancing or self-isolation is nearly impossible. Water insecurity means frequent hand washing or cleaning surfaces are a challenge. Transportation challenges and a high cost of living means a lack of access to soap, hand sanitizers and disinfectant cleaners. In fact, the COVID-19 pandemic is highlighting the following fact that communities across the Canadian North have been living in a crisis for decades. They have suffered through a persistent housing problem. It has led to high rates of respiratory diseases, asthma, diabetes, and other health conditions. They have a threadbare healthcare system. Many communities do not even have a resident nurse. And all of this makes the Canadian North vulnerable to the COVID-19 pandemic. State-sanctioned housing programs were first implemented in the Arctic in the mid-20th century. Since 2004, federal support for social housing was phased out and replaced by irregular housing funding packages. The money goes for maintaining and retrofitting existing units. It is not used to build new houses. In 2018, Terry Audla, CEO of Nunavut Housing Corporation, said that over 10,000 Nunavut residents were without housing of their own. In 2019, according to Inuit National Housing Strategy, over half of Inuit in Inuit Nunagat live in crowded housing compared to 8.5% of non-Indigenous Canadians. In addition to the housing crisis, health inequities make northern communities more vulnerable to COVID-19. In fact, Inuit children have the highest rates of chronic respiratory disease in the world, their tuberculosis rate is 300 times that of non-Indigenous Canadians. But there is good news. The Canadian North has developed a series of containment strategies at community and regional levels. For example, Northwest Territories has shut its borders to non-essential travel to control the spread of the virus and implemented a mandatory 14-day self-isolation for all travellers. The Nunavut government implemented Canada's tightest travel restrictions with a travel ban for everyone except residents and critical workers and a mandatory 14-day pre-boarding self-isolation. The indigenous government Dene Nation is encouraging members to head out to the land to distance themselves from COVID-19. Dene Nation chief Norman Yakelea recently wrote, Elders and knowledge keepers have always told us a day will come when we will need to go to the land. And now is that time. With schools closed, he's encouraging families and their children to take the opportunity to learn more about their culture and traditions and what has sustained Tenny people for thousands of years. Community-based organizations like Hote Tse Ida and Foxy or Fostering Open Expression Among Youth launched the Our Home is Our Camp social media campaign to promote social distancing in a culturally safe and contextually relevant way. The federal government is helping through a $305 million National Indigenous Community Support Fund. Almost $130 million more is being allocated specifically for Yukon, Nunavut and the Northwest Territories to help bolster their healthcare systems and provide financial support for their airlines and other businesses. These funding announcements have been positively received by Northern and Indigenous leadership. But how much will they do to sustainably and effectively address the core problems, infrastructure gaps and health inequalities that have led to the crisis in the first place. Only time will tell.
This story was adapted from Julia Christensen's conversation article, Housing is Health. Coronavirus highlights the dangers of the housing crisis in Canada's north. Christensen is a Canada Research Chair in Northern Governance and Public Policy. She leads the At Home in the North Partnership, a network of northern and indigenous communities, governments, NGOs and researchers working in northern Canada to share community-led strategies to address chronic housing need.